I'm Paula Doyle and today I'm going to show you how to make a ravioli quilt. Uh, the good thing about this quilt, it's made with recycled or upcycled jeans um, and flannel. So uh, there's nothing that needs to go into landfill. The basic unit or block for the quilt is the ravioli. And so you can see it's denim on one side and flannel on the other and with a little extra piece of flannel, in this case, uh, to quilt the, the block. So what you're gonna start with is you're going to start with a, a six inch piece of denim, a six inch piece of flannel, a five inch piece of wadding or batting, and a little two and a half inch piece of flannel if you wish to use that as your um, as you're quilting this. Now, what you do, I've, I've designed this special ruler for the ravioli quilt, and you can see it's exactly six inches, um, and it's got markings on it so that you can actually thumb through. This is a bit noisy here, um, but I'm just using my Frixian pen to mark some seam lines on this one. The first one that I'm doing all around is um is at the five inch mark so it's marking a five inch square in the center of this piece of, of denim on the front side and i'm also going to mark my quilting area too with that um, then the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to turn that piece of denim over um, and i'm going to line it up again and again do the marking of the five inch square um, on the back side of that piece of denim. So like that. Now I have to say, the, the uh, ravioli ruler is something that, that is very useful in making this quilt, uh, but if you, if you don't have a ravioli ruler, you could always use a six inch um, Omni Grid ruler to do your markings too. Um, so, what you do with your with your marked denim is that you take a glue stick and this is a fabric glue stick and i'm going to just put some dots of glue on it you can probably see it in the in the in the blue color here and i'm just putting about five dots of glue on it taking the piece of wadding or batting and you can see that it's exactly five inches and I'll just glue that in, in place. I'll take the six inch piece of flannel and put that over the top. And now I'm just gonna take the glue stick again, put one dot of glue in the center and then just place that uh, piece of flannel in the center there. And now we're ready to take this to the machine and stitch it. I've got my machine um, set with a with an 80 jeaned needle, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just hold that sandwich together at the edges so that they don't flip o open um, with the with some of these little wonder clips. I find that these are very very useful for making this this uh, this particular quilt. So I've got all four corners done now. Now I'm going to take it to the machine um, and I'm going to just stitch. Now I, I like to bring the, the bottom thread to the top. So I do that first. And to do that, it's very helpful if you have a little stylus or a stiletto. And then, see if I can find my foot underneath the machine, there it is. And I'm just going to stitch along the outside the marked line. And when you come to the, uh, to, oh, I just went a bit too far, so I'm just going to go back a couple of stitches. And then continue stitching on that marked line. Okay, that's better. And then I'm 
just going to stitch over my line, my previous line of sewing by about an inch. Take that out and clip the threads off. There we are. Now that piece of, of wadding or batting is enclosed between uh, the piece of, uh, of, of denim and the piece of flannel at the back. Um, and now I'm going to quilt this. So I'm going to just make a, uh, make a seam line around that, that little square at the center. You can use um, any foot that you want as long as you have some sort of a, a feed fe feature. So I'm using open, an open toe fe foot so you can see what's going on here. Uh, but you could just as easily use a quarter inch foot. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch around that. Now, if, if, the, if the corner of that flips up, you can just hold it down with your stiletto before you turn. And again, I just overstitched my previous seam line. Um, get it out now. All right, clip the thread. And it's almost ready. The only thing I need to do now is to uh, is to rotary cut that with the frayed edge. Um, there we go. So, what I have here is I have my rotary cutter, and it's been fi fitted uh, with a pinking blade here. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take the ravioli ruler again. Here we are. Now on the ravioli ruler, you can see that there's a little dotted white line marked a quarter inch away from the edge. So I'm just going to line that dotted line with my seam, and then I'm going to cut through all of this with my pinking blade. And you can see that as, as long as you're nice and slow, um, the, um, the pinking blade will cut beautifully through all of these layers. You just need to be a bit patient. You can't do it fast. So there we go. And last side. This isn't the very itch exact block, so you don't need to be super accurate about anything. That's the good thing. Um, so I now have the ravioli ready to go into a quilt. And I've been working on a quilt. Um, here's, here's the quilt that I've been working on. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join this ravioli block onto the end of this row of blocks. So again, I do that by putting it flannel sides together. And this time I'm gonna use um, one of these, of these bigger clips. So again, I'm just gonna line up the, the ends. And I'm gonna use two, two of, the, of the bigger clips like this. I'm also going to use a thread saver. So, a thread saver is just two pieces of fabric that are cut and used to, uh, to run the stitches from to uh, and onto the block and off again. So I'm going to just go ahead and start stitching on that. Let me get that out of the way. Get to the end of that and then just tuck in the ravioli right there. And I'm gonna over stitch right where my seam line is. So I'm just gonna stitch. I do a little bit of a back stitch here, just one or two stitches. 
and then I can remove the clip and again back, back stitch a little bit at the end and then simply stitch off onto a second thread saver. Cloth with clip with scissors and now you, your row of blocks is ready to go into the quilt. And you can see that I've actually stitched three rows together here. And so this is the fourth row. Um, and I'm going to, again, just put that flannel sides together. I'm gonna continue using the big clip. So what I do with the, when it, where the block join, I'm going to stitch from here down to the end and I'm going to flip that seam allowance going up to, to, where, to where I started and that one going in the opposite direction so that they, uh, they, are, they will lock into each other. I'm going to take another one of my clips and I'm going to do that for every block in the, in the uh, that I join up. So there we go. There's another one and another one. So again, seam allowance is going to where I begin began the stitching, and the on the other side to to uh, the uh, in the opposite direction. So there we go. Now I like to have a bit more stability, so I'm going to put a couple more of those clips in place to hold it all together while I'm stitching. I like this, you could actually do it with kids because there's no pins. You can, you can just go ahead and, um, and oh, yeah, they do kind of tend to fly off. That is one thing. So here we are. We're ready to stitch this entire seam. Here we go at the end beginning I guess and so I'm ready to stitch push this one back to one side and again from the thread saver I'm going to st stitch the whole thing and just do stitch on a couple of stitches backwards and then just take the clips off as you need. If you're finding that you have a bit more trouble, you might want to put your walking foot on. Um, here on this machine, I have something called an even feed uh, foot. So that's what I'm doing with this one. Uh, but your walking foot is a good option otherwise. Nearly there now. And again, at the end, you're going to want to do a back stitch and then stitch back onto the thread saver to finish. Clip. And your quilt top is complete. Now this size of a quilt top is a, a small dog bed. Um, so it's big enough for my little li Lily who's been running around here. Um, the back of it looks, is, is just a flannel quilt like that. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit how I'm going to finish that. The The main thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to deal with those seams, one of them that you pressed up and, and you want to release those. Um, I have some scissors here. Here we go. Um, so all I do here is I'm just going to clip that there and that see that loosens that up and and on this side I'll cl clip in the other direction like that there we go to make sure that that that's that seam allowance is now 
free at that particular point. Um, I'll show you the one that I've got finished. Um, it's again, I think I showed you at the beginning, but here it is all ready and bound. So, so I do a bit of do a bit of binding. It's it's optional whether you want to do a bit of binding. Uh, you don't need to, uh, but I like the look of it, and it does it does affect the durability. Um, so this is the the back of that little dog quilt. That's Penny's quilt or Lily's quilt. Yeah, there we go. Um, now I'm going to show you a couple of other quilts. This is a big dog size over here. Uh, that this one here is 20 block so with one pair of jeans you can make a little 20 block quilt this is a 35 block quilt but with a um, with an added border which you add the same way that you add the add the bar of blocks and this is a bigger cuddle size quilt on the wall here um, it's um, this this is um, it's 50 by 70 inches finished and it's what we call a cuddle size. But you can make this quilt in any size you want. Um, you can even make it all sorts of, of things that you that you might want to do. So I'll show you a couple of other quilts here. Um, this is a quilt, oh wait, uh, uh, this is a quilt that is uh, a bench size. So you can see that I did it, um, it's very long. And so that fits on a bench. Uh, the nice thing is that one goes to the park and uh, you know on the, on the bench or in, in a house on a bench or on the sofa. Um, this one here, uh, I'll, I'll show you that one in a little bit. So you can make it any size. You don't need to limit yourself to a particular number of blocks. Uh, but those are handy sizes that I like to have. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of other options. So again, here, just to go over it again, we start with the square of denim uh, that's marked on both sides. We have a, a, a square of, um, of wadding and a square of, uh, of flannel for the back and a little optional square that's going to end up on the front. So you're going to end up with a bit that's glued like that and you're going to clip it and you're going to sew all around like that. Then you're going to take your pinking blade and your uh, ravioli ruler and cut that ravioli edge. You, uh, you can do it in all sorts of different colors. So um, this, is a, this is a different uh, pair of jeans that I've used. And then once you, you do, you're gonna be doing that, you're gonna be clipping those together and joining the blocks with a straight seam. Now you can do that and, and with the quilting, there are different quilting options. So you don't need that little square of uh, flannel. You could, for example, just do some free motion quilting in that square and imagining, imagine what a, what a great little quilt that might be and what a fun little quilt that might be. Um, the other thing you can do is you can make appliques so here I've used um, a motif fabric and I've made an applique ravioli. Uh, the one thing you want to do if you're going to do a, an applique like that, it's a satin stitch applique, um, you're going to want to satin stitch that uh, before you uh, sandwich the uh, wadding and, 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 and backing fabric. Uh, so here's some other ones that I've done little fun ones. Here's one with a, with a heart fabric in the center, for example. Um, or this one is some cat motifs from a cat fabric that I've made a nice little heart centered block. Or you can actually just take any fabric that is has some nice motifs on it and cut the motifs out and end up with a no lovely little block. You can also get purchased appliques and do something like that. Or even take a fabric like that, um, that fabric and do a yo-yo for the center of the block. Um, lots of different options. Um, here's, here's one. It looks like a regular ravioli block, but on the back side, 
I've done a leftovers block, which is a, a itsy bits and, and wonky strips block, all made out of leftover flannels. Um, and I'll show you uh, what that one looks like. That's that big table runner that I showed you. And this is the back side of it, see? So that's all my leftover flannels uh, going into, into the back side of that bench quilt. Um, then we have this one. This is a different op option. On um, this one, I didn't use um, flannel because I know we, we don't all have flannel shirts. Uh, but this one is, is a piece of, um, of uh, indigo dyed batik. Um, on the back and and different one on on the on the back side of it and that and on the applique and this is this is this last little quilt that I'm going to be showing you this one I call blue sunflowers so again join in the same way but there's just a little applique and I've done some some quilting around that to make the sunflowers and this is what the back side of that quilt goes and this is going to be another dog quilt, you know, so it'll it'll stand the test of time. The other thing I would have to say, you don't need to wash these quilts ahead of time, but the more you wash and wear, uh, the nicer the fray will be. So, uh, so have a play with it and see what you think. Um, at any rate, that's that's the ravioli quilt and how to to make it. Um, the uh, all of the instructions. If you want to purchase the ravioli ruler. Uh, will be on my website, um, and uh, so I hope you have fun with this. That's the main thing, and recycle those jeans.